بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومولانا محمد عبد الله ورسوله اما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القران المجيد والفرقان الحميد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين امين وعن وعن انس رضي الله عنه قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يكثر ان يقول يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلبي على دينك فقلت يا نبي الله آمنا بك وبما جئت به فهل تخاف علينا قال نعم إن القلوب بين أصبعين من أصابع الله يقلبها كيف يشاء رواه أبو داود والترميذي وابن ماجة صدق الله مولانا العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين My dear respected elders and brothers Young friends, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. For our opening and first program of Ramadan, before we start, a few points by way of adab and etiquette of a dini majlis listening to a dini talk. Alhamdulillah, we are very fortunate that in our country, and also in our day and age of social media that in spite of our current lockdown alhamdulillah we still have access to many dini discourses many bayans many speeches from our akabirin from our leading scholars across the world first and foremost sunnatullah that allah's system it works in different ways in as far as dini majalis and listening to dini discourses listening to wa'd and nasihat is concerned sunnatullah is that the more focus a person shows the more need a person displays in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to benefiting from these words which are based on the Quran and Sunnah, the greater sincerity a person shows in terms of making good intentions of his reformation. So, Alhamdulillah, throughout the month of Ramadan, we will be listening to many bayans based on the Quran and Sunnah. So, as a duty for us, first and foremost is that we correct our intentions. And we make a firm resolution that inshallah our listening will be based on ikhlas and sincerity that we want to draw from the message of the Quran and Sunnah. We want to absorb the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the words of His beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and allow these, these pearls to penetrate into the crevices of our heart so that they can become a means of reforming our lives. So that after listening to these words of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we are able to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and inshallah reap the hidayat, the guidance which these words contain. We will inshallah also make an intention of reflecting on our own shortcomings with the intention of inshallah changing for the good so by the time we end our month of ramadan we inshallah we come out as fresh and reformed persons so 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Furqan, in Surah Al-Furqan, under the heading of Wa'ibadur Rahman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, very beautiful ruku, and if you have access to a good authentic translation or tafsir, I encourage everyone to read these verses and reflect on these beautiful words where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lists and describes the sifat, the attribute of his pious servants. And he, he, he describes these as وَعِبَادُ Rahman that these are the servants of Allah most merciful. And then he records their good, positive and pious deeds and their attributes. So from among the pious deeds and the attributes of Allah's close servants, Allah's special and chosen servants, one attribute mentioned in this ruku is وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ لَمْ يَخِرُّوا عَلَيْهَا صُمَّ وَعُمْيَانَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah's pious servants are those, Allah's special and chosen servants. One of their attributes is that when they are ذُكِّرُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ When they are reminded of the verses of their Lord, which means whenever they are counseled, whenever, whenever they are advised, whenever advice is shared with them, then Allah says, لَمْ يَخِرُّوا عَلَيْهَا ثُمَّ وَعُمْيَانًا They do not fall on these verses of the Qur'an as deaf and blind ones. They do not fall on the verses of the Qur'an and they do not fall on the nasiha as deaf and blind people. What does it mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse firstly is trying to indicate towards the munafiqeen and then praise the mu'minun mukhlisun, the sincere believers that they have a very clear distinction from the hypocrites. The hypocrites are those who outwardly show attentiveness and focus in front of the Prophet wasallam to conceal their kufr and the filth of hypocrisy, they used to show and display enthusiasm and focus. Yet, deep down, their, their hearts were full of hypocrisy and kufr. They concealed hatred for Allah and His Messenger wasallam, hatred and enmity for the Muslim community, and animosity generally for Islam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that on the contrary, Allah's sincere and pious servants are those that whenever they are counseled, whenever they are advised through the verses of their Lord, through the verses of the Qur'an, then they do not fall on these verses as deaf and blind ones. That means that such is their levels of motivation and their levels of focus and zeal and enthusiasm that not only do they listen attentively, outwardly, but they make a firm intention, they have this resolution, and they are sincere in trying to absorb the words of the Qur'an and Sunnah deep down into their hearts. They sit with utmost respect. Their hearts tremble with the very mention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His words. At the beginning of Surah Al-Anfal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes these sincere believers in the words, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ That the believers, the perfect believers, believers who are complete in their iman, the sincere believers are those that when Allah's, Allah's name is mentioned, at the very mention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ their hearts begin to tremble and shake. وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا And when the verses of the verses of Allah are recited on them, زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا It becomes a means of their iman increasing. That the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the words of the Qur'an, it has this profound effect in raising their imani spirits. So, as a summary, we should also adopt the same approach, the same attitude that inshallah we, shall, we will all sit with utmost respect. We will sit 
and listen attentively, sit with the intentions of change and self-reformation. We will make this intention on this very first day of Ramadan. We will make this intention that inshallah, whatever understanding we gain through these bayans and listening to these discourses, we will inshallah put this into practice. We will in- endeavor to become better Muslims. We will endeavor to become practicing Muslims, devout and faithful servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because in essence, all this is gratitude and shukr, grateful, gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for gifting us with the gift of Iman. That in return for this priceless treasure of Iman, we are promising to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that to the best of our ability, Ya Allah, we inshallah, we shall strive to listen to you, Sami'na wa ata'na. That this is the motto of a Muslim, that Ya Allah, we have heard your message, wa ata'na, and to the best of your ability, Ya Allah, we shall abide and we shall strive to become obedient servants. In another verse, in Surah Al-Qaf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again on the same theme describes إِنَّ فِي ذَٰلِكَ لَذِكْرَىٰ لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٌ أَوْ أَلْقَ السَّمْعَ وَهُوَ الشَّهِيدٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that who takes heed from the Qur'an? Who is it that will take hidayat and who will reap the guidance of the Qur'an? The Qur'an was sent for the entire humanity, for all of mankind. Yet, we know that when it comes to deriving benefit and reaping the guidance of the Qur'an, it is only those sincere believers who will benefit fully from the Qur'an, from Allah's final message. So Allah mentions that these fortunate people, Ahu inna fi dhalika la dhikra liman kana lahu qalbun That there is a profound reminder and counsel for those for that person who possesses a heart. Now what does it mean? There is a message. There is heed and counsel for one who has a heart. Allah is referring to a receptive and fertile heart. That for those sincere believers who have kept their hearts fertile with the remembrance and obedience of Allah, those who have a receptive heart, they have not allowed their hearts to become contaminated with the filth of sins and disobedience. For them, there is, they, they always reap immensely from the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And further Allah says, أَوْ أَلْقَ السَّمْعَ وَهُوَ shahid." That if they are unable to draw directly and gain a direct understanding from the Qur'an, then they do not allow that limited understanding and knowledge of the Qur'an to be an obstacle. Why? Because Allah mentions further that shahid. They nevertheless, they have this enthusiasm. They, have, they are motivated to listen to the talks of the ulama, the akabirin. They listen to words of the Qur'an and Sunnah and thereby in this way they are also able to take lessons and take heed and understand the message of the Qur'an. So Allah mentions here two categories of people. First and foremost are those who, have, who are literate people, literate in deen. They have a sound understanding of the, of the knowledge of the Qur'an and Sunnah. And because of, the, because of being literate, they have access to the Qur'an, they, had, they have access to authentic translations and tafasir, and they are able to study for themselves and in this way, they are able to benefit from the Qur'an and Sunnah. And Allah mentions, as for those who are not literate to that level, then they alqa sam'a wa huwa shaheed. They reflect and they listen and t- attentively. When discourses are shared with them, then they listen attentively, they sit with respect, they focus, their hearts are open, and this is how they t- take heed from the Qur'an and Sunnah in this way. So these are a few important etiquette of sitting in any dini gathering, some general etiquette, that the more we sit with respect and motivation and the intention of 
reformation that inshallah whatever we we hear throughout these discourses we will inshallah put that into practice inshallah we will sit with a receptive fertile heart and we will absorb the words of Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam on the subject of respect Hazrat Mufti Muhammad Shafi sahib rahmatullahi the late father of Hazrat Mufti Muhammad Taqi Usmani sahib damat barakatuh has written with regards to the virtues and the status of the Sahaba radiyallahu anhum, that the status of the Sahaba radiyallahu anhum and their rank and the respect which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala awarded them was on account of the respect which they showed for Allah's beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It comes in a hadith, Imam Tirmidhi rahmatullahi alayhi has recorded this hadith on the authority of Anas radiyallahu anhu that Whenever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to come out in front of the Sahaba radiyallahu anhum and they would be sitting, amongst them would be Hazrat Shaykhain, Hazrat Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu and Hazrat Umar radiyallahu anhu. It comes in the hadith that فَلَا يَرْفَعُ أَحَدٌ مِّنْهُمْ إِلَيْهِ بَصَرَهُ إِلَّا أَبُو بَكْرٍ وَعُمَرٍ That such was the awe of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and such were the levels of respect which the Sahaba radiyallahu anhum had for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that out of respect, no one raised their eyes in front of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the exception of Hazrat Abu Bakr and Hazrat Umar. That they were very informal and casual with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they were able to pluck up the courage and gaze at the beloved and the blessed face of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. However, with regards to the other Sahaba radiyallahu anhum sitting in the gathering, فَلَا يَرْفَعُ أَحَدٌ مِّنْهُمْ إِلَيْهِ بَصَرَهُ That none would actually stare and raise their gaze at Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in respect. And the hadith continues, فَإِنَّهُمَا كَانَ يَنْظُرَانِ إِلَيْهِ وَيَنْظُرُ إِلَيْهِمَا وَيَتَبَسَّمَانِ إِلَيْهِ وَيَتَبَسَّمُ, ويتبسم لَهُمَا That with regards to Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu anhu, Hazrat Umar radiyallahu an, that they used to, because of being informal with Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they used to raise their eyes and raise their gaze towards him. And Nabi, in turn, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to look at them. And both Siddiq Akbar and Hazrat Umar radiyallahu anhu used to smile at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in turn, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would smile at them. It comes in another hadith. Hazrat Usama ibn Sharik radiyallahu anhu says that on one occasion I came in the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whilst his sahaba, the companions, were sitting around him. And he describes the manner of their sitting and their respect and how attentive and how still motionless they were sitting in the gathering. He describes it with the words, كَأَنَّمَا عَلَى رُؤُوسِهِمْ الطَّيْرِ that it appeared as though birds had perched on their heads, on the heads of the Sahaba. That they were completely still and motionless, sitting with utmost respect. respect. It comes in a hadith of Shama'il that إِذَا تَكَلَّمَ أَطْرَقَ جُلَسَاؤُهُ كَأَنَّمَا عَلَى رُؤُوسِهِمُ الطَّيْرِ That Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded such respect that when he spoke, that the Sahaba radiyallahu anhum, the Sahaba in the gathering, used to lower their heads in respect, in awe, as though ala as though birds had perched on their heads. So in our bayans, in our dini discourses, we may not have the physical company of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but yet we have the words of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which are shared with us. And it is a duty on us that we too, we share and we show, we display the level of respect which Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's Mubarak words, they deserve. It is also mentioned with regards to Imam Malik rahmatullah alayhi, that on one occasion, whilst seated in Al-Masjid al-Nabawi and teaching thousands of his students the Mubarak a hadith of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, during one of his lessons, he was bitten 16 times by a scorpion and because of the pain and the discomfort his face became pale he was obviously in distress 
and suffering, but he did not stop teaching his lesson. He continued with his lesson. So after the lesson was over, one of his students, Abdullah ibn Mubarak rahmatullah, asked him that we saw your complexion had changed. We noticed that you were in great pain. Why did you continue? So Imam Malik rahmatullah explained that I was bitten by a scorpion. However, فَصَبَرْتُ إِجْلَالًا لِحَدِيثِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. Imam Malik rahmatullah replied that I was patient and I endured the pain solely out of respect for the ahadith of Nabiya Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa That I endured, I endured the pain patiently because I knew that these are not the words of any ordinary person. These are the words of Allah's beloved, Allah's final messenger, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Imam Malik rahmatullah alayhi, endured his personal suffering and pain purely for the sake of of respecting and honoring the Mubarak words of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is also mentioned with the Ghassi Imam Malik rahmatullah alayhi, that when the numbers of students increased in his gathering, he used to teach in Masjid al-Nabawi. So because of the numbers, it was difficult for people, for the students sitting at the back to, to hear him and listen to his, his dars and his lesson. So on one occasion, people requested that because the numbers are growing, why don't you appoint a person who will be able to convey your words to them, those sitting at the back, in a louder voice? Appoint a speaker who would be able to, 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 to convey your words to those at the back. So on this request, Imam Malik rahmatullahi mentioned, he said, he mentioned a verse of Surah Al-Hujarat, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed the Sahaba radiyallahu anhum with a distinct requirement and adab. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu that O believers, la tarfa'u aswatakum fawqa sawtin nabi. That O believers, do not raise your voices above the voice of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Imam Malik rahmatullahi, he recited the same verse and mentioned wa hurmatuhu hayyan wa mayyita. That the sanctity which Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam deserves was not just simply confined to his lifetime. This sanctity is also incumbent on us even after his demise. So Imam Malik rahmatullahi, who was there in Masjid al-Nabawi sitting near the Rawdah, he refused to appoint somebody who would convey the words of Imam Malik rahmatullahi by shouting and by, by conveying the words at a loud voice. He refused to accept this, respect, this request purely on account of the sanctity of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another scholar of hadith, Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi rahimahullah, it is narrated with regards to this scholar here, that إِذَا قَرَأَ حَدِيثَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَمَرَهُمْ بِالسُّكُوتِ Whenever he would, he would recite the Mubarak words of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would instruct the gathering and the people in the gathering to remain silent. And he would use the same verse of Surah Al-Hujurat as a dalil, as evidence, that لَا تَرْفَعُوا أَصْوَاتَكُمْ فَوْقَ صَوْتِ النَّبِي That do not raise your voices above the voice of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he would interpret this hadith in this way, that just as it was incumbent on the Sahaba radiyallahu anhum to respect the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam physically when they were in his presence, and to lower, lower their voices, likewise, even after the demise of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi, Rahimahullah used to explain to his students that it is wajib and incumbent for us to remain silent and show respect for the hadith, which are the words of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the purpose of mentioning these few incidents is to highlight the importance which our Salaf al-Saliheen, which our pious predecessors attached to this important Islamic concept of adab and respect for anything which is associated with deen, anything which is connected to Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because this is sunnatullah, that the greater the respect for Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the more respect we saw for deen, even outwardly, accordingly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond by, insha'Allah, transforming our hearts and by, insha'Allah, giving us the tawfiq to make amal 
on whatever we happen to hear in our bayans. At the beginning, I mentioned the verse of Surah Al-Fatiha, Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqim. As I mentioned that from among the rites of the Qur'an, Alhamdulillah, we will be dedicating many hours of the night and day in the recitation and the tilawat of the Qur'an al-Kareem. Alhamdulillah, a great ibadat. The Holy Qur'an was revealed in the month of Ramadan. It has this very close association and link with the month of Ramadan. It comes in a hadith as well with regards to the virtues of both fasting and tilawat, that both our fasts and our recitation will intercede on behalf of the fasting person on the, on the Day of Judgment. Our fast will plead to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, O oh my Lord, Ya Rabbi, manatuhu, I deprived your servant of food and drink during the day. Fashaffi'ni fi, that Ya Allah, O oh my Lord, accept my intercession on his behalf. I wish to take your servant into Jannah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept the intercession of our fasting. Likewise, the Qur'an will also plead to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I deprived him of sleep during the night, meaning he dedicated hours in the night reciting your kalam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also grant the Qur'an intercession and accept the intercession of the Qur'an on behalf of the believing servants who dedicated their hours in reciting the Qur'an. So both the Qur'an, the Holy Qur'an and our fasting will intercede on our behalf on the Day of Judgment, insha'Allah, and plead with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take us into Jannah. But from among the many rites of the Qur'an, over and above, above just mere recitation, is of course embracing the message of the Qur'an, practicing on the Qur'an, and wholeheartedly accepting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen as a whole. Unfortunately, today, due to many distractions in our life, we, though we may be dedica dedicating our time and our effort in reciting the Qur'an, but yet, unfortunately, little time is dedicated in trying to understand and reflect on Allah's message that these are the words of the Qur'an which I recite. What is my Lord trying to tell me? How do I respond to the call of my Rabb, Rabbul Alameen? What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demanding from me? What are the rights of the Qur'an? So it is also essential that we spend some time listening to these bayans. Inshallah, we will go through some of the ayat of the Qur'an, some of the explanations and the tafsir of selected verses and try to understand Allah's message with this in view, with this in mind that inshallah through understanding and reflection Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for us and Allah will give, it, give us the tawfiq to inshallah embrace Allah's message. So this first verse of Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah Al-Fatiha is a surah which all of us we have memorized we know of by heart, we read in our salah daily, many, many times. So, a great surah with many virtues. One name of, from among many names is Ta'limul Mas'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this surah al-Fatiha has taught us how to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how to ask Allah for our most important need. So in this dua, of Surah Al-Fatiha and we should reflect on this every time we recite Surah Fatiha in our Salah. Read, try to read slowly and clearly with understanding that we are beseeching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us. That, that oh Allah guide us on the straight path. When we ask Allah for hidayat and guidance, what does it mean? It means that, Ya Allah, your guidance can come, firstly, guide us to the correct aqidah and beliefs. That we all know that as a, as a Muslim, that we have to believe in the correct aqidah, the correct beliefs of the Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Many a times, inadvertently, people stray from the correct aqidah by becoming confused 
or by reading uh, literature which is not authentic or by following groups which have strayed from mainstream Islam and this is how they compromise their Iman and they compromise their Aqeedah. So first and foremost, when we make this dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance, we are asking Allah to guide us on the correct Aqeedah, the correct beliefs which a Muslim should hold, which is based on the Quran and Sunnah, based on what we have learned from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Sahaba radiyallahu anhum. Likewise, we beseech Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, we beg Allah to keep us steadfast on Iman. That Ya Allah, just as you have blessed me with this priceless treasure of Iman, this gift of Iman, Ya Allah, keep my Iman pure. Ya Allah, keep me steadfast on the path of Iman until I breathe my last. Keep me with firm istiqamat and steadfastness on Iman. We will continue, inshallah, with this same theme, this dua of Surah Al Fatiha, Ihdin al Sirat al Mustaqim, uh, from tomorrow, inshallah. And I conclude our first program today. Um, inshallah, I have this in mind that after each bayan every day, we'll go through a dua from Al Hizb Al A'zam. These are, mashallah, the beautiful, radiant duas narrated from Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, extremely effective to soften our hearts and to, inshallah, strengthen our bond and connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, <clears throat> For our first fast and first uh, program today, I'm going through a dua which is in the manzil, Yawm al the Tuesday's manzil in Al-Hizb al azam It's at the beginning. It's part of a lengthy dua narrated by Umm al-Mu'mineen, Umm Salama radiyallahu anha. And the words of the dua, Allahumma inni as'aluka fawatih al-khayri wa khawatima wa jawami'ahu wa kawamilah wa awwalahu wa akhirah wa zahirahu wa batinah being the first of Ramadan, very appropriate dua for us to start off with today. That we ask Allah, Allahumma inni as'aluka fawatih al-khayr. Oh Allah, I ask you and I beg you for the beginning of virtue and the beginning of all good deeds. So we ask Allah, Allah bless me at the beginning of any good deed, any good virtuous deed which I start off with. So being the first of Ramadan, we ask Allah to bless the beginning of Ramadan and make sure that we remain focused وَخَوَاتِمَهُ till the end. Oh Allah, I ask you for the goodness at the end of every amal. It should not happen that we start with this fervor and zeal only to find that after a few days it fizzles out. So this is why Nabi Karim sallallahu is teaching us وَخَوَاتِمَهُ oh Allah, I also ask you for the, for the blessings at the end of all my good deeds. So in this case here, we ask Allah to continue to shower His tawfiq on us at the beginning and at the end throughout Ramadan, but we remain motivated, remain devoted, and we remain close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, وَجَوَامِعَهُ وَكَوَامِلَهُ That we ask, Ya Allah, we ask you for all the concise and comprehensive things of any good deed. Meaning, Ya Allah, bless us with the spirit and soul of our deeds. So in this case here, in our fasting, we beseech Allah's mercy to make us understand the true potential of Ramadan in terms of achieving its goals, such as taqwa, sympathy for the poor, and likewise, cleaning ourselves from bad habits, a complete overhaul through this month of fasting and devotion. وَكَوَامِلَهُ We ask Allah for the perfection and completion of our good deeds. Which means, in our case here, O oh Allah, grant me the perfect of Ramadan. Grant me perfection in my fasting, perfection in my tilawat, perfection in my dua. So we ask Allah for completion and perfection in our deeds. And then again, emphasizing وَأَوَّلَهُ وَآخِرَهُ Grant me blessings at the beginning, at the end. And then وَظَاهِرَهُ وَبَاطِنَ Oh Allah, I ask you that you bless me with the outer form of the ibadat and also the inner wisdom and the inner secrets of every virtuous deed and ibadat. So in this case here, we ask Allah, outwardly Allah, give me the tawfiq to discharge 
my fasting in the best, in the correct way, making sure that we understand all the masail of things that break our fasting, things which may render our fasting makru, or generally things which would render our fast or which would really spoil the rewards of our fast, such as, for example, backbiting, ghibah. We know that these are sins which, although may not declare the fast as null and void and broken, but it will deprive a person of the rewards of his fasting. So we ask Allah, oh Allah, keep my outward form of my ibadat, outward fasting, Ya Allah, correct, and bless me in the outward form. Likewise, وَبَعْطِنَا And oh Allah, ba- oh Allah, bless me with the inner secrets and wisdom and the components of my fasting. And the dua ends, وَالدَّرَجَاتِ الْعُلَى مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ آمِينَ O oh Allah, I beg you for a high and lofty position in Jannah. Amin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq to spend our month of Ramadan correctly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our ibadat, our qiyam, our taraweeh, our sadaqat, our zakat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove this current affliction, this, uh, this pandemic from the whole of humanity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who have been become martyred, oh Allah, may Allah accept their martyrdom. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all a true realization to change the course of our lives, to prepare for, that, for, for our akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us true love for deen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us value the gift of iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq to raise our children correctly with Islam and with a love for deen, with a love for Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all akhlaq hasana, good akhlaq. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, protect us from akhlaq dhameema, from bad akhlaq. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill our hearts with love for Allah and Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.